Great to gather in the name of the Lord on the Lord's Day together. Welcome to each and every one of us, and welcome to our guest, the uh, accompanist, Brian. Uh, as you may know, we're, we are continuing our search for our, our permanent uh, accompanist, and so I've invited Brian today to, to accompany us in his uh, wonderful, attempt, wonderfully talented way. You may remember he joined us for Easter service, so uh, we're, thanks, Brian, for coming today. And uh, so welcome to, to all who have gathered in the name of the Lord together. It is a privilege. To worship God together. Uh, I remember that the, the, the word worship, I think, you know, sometimes these things are made up, but I think this one's true. The word worship means worth it. God is worth it. God is worth all of we bring to Him. So we bring Him our ourselves, we bring Him our praises, we bring Him everything we have. So just welcome in the name of the Lord. It's good to be together this morning. Let's join together in the call to worship. Please take your bulletins. And let's read a bit of Psalm 33 together. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. For our heart is glad in Him. He us to trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us. Even as we hope in You. Let us pray. Father, our souls wait for You. Amidst the busyness of our lives and the the unrest of our hearts, we wait for you. We are here to worship you. We are here to experience you. We are here to know you. We are here to, to hear from you. So would you speak to us? Would you draw near to us? Would you receive our prayers and praises? Not because we are worth it, but because you are worth it. So as we sing, as we pray, as we join our voices together, as we hear from your word, Lord, would you minister to our souls and lift us up even to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to try out a new song this morning. It's very simple. So uh, we're going to, we as the band up here, we'll, we'll run through it once. It's found in your, in your bulletin. Uh, so it starts on the first page and goes over to the second page. We'll run through it once and then I'll invite you to sing with us and we will sing it as a group twice together. This is... Not by might, which is from the scriptures. It's just not by might, not by power, but by God's spirit alone. So please stand with us and let's sing Not By Might. We'll sing it through once and then I'll invite you to join with us.
healed, to have our wounds binded, to when we are lost to be restored. So we can let's also sing together, What Can Wash Away My Sin? It's found in the hymnal on page 254. Please remain standing if you are able. And let us sing, What Can Wash Away My Sin? In page 254. to him. We remember that the scriptures say, Jesus said, this time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So we take a moment each week. We take time to silence our hearts before the Lord in individual confession. To ask the Spirit to show us. Sometimes you might not know exactly what you should be repenting of confessing. We can ask the Spirit and He, the Spirit will show us those things where God wants to relieve the burdens of sin off of us. So let's take a few moments in individual confession and silence at this time. Oh Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come before you, where we don't have to be afraid, because you draw us in with your loving arms, and yet you ask us to turn from those things that are keeping us from you. Lord, even this week I've been angry, I've been impatient, I've been unkind, I've fallen far short of your glory, but thank you that you forgive me because of the precious blood of Jesus. Help my unbelief, help our unbelief, 
And Lord, help us to trust in you all the more. Thank you that we are assured of forgiveness in your scriptures, which say if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's sing one more song at this time, uh, hymn number 32. And please keep out your bulletins as well, because as, uh, as we look... Sometimes do. There's a, we found a, a version of the song that has an extra chorus to it. If, uh, if all the coordination is a bit much, that's fine. We'll sing the chorus for you. But if you want to sing the chorus along with us, we're going to sing it after verse 2 and after verse 4. So, But we're going to sing the words that you find in hymn page 32, The King of Love, which is based on Psalm 23. So please stand with us one more time, if you are able. And we will sing through verse 1. You may not know this tune yet, so we'll sing through verse 1, and then we'll start back at verse 1 together. The King of Love, my shepherd, Insert, if you'd like to follow along, Colossians 1, 1 through 8. This is the reading of God's Word. Morning. Salutation. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faith our brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. All thanks, God, for the Colossians. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before and of the truth. The gospel has come to you. 
Just as it is by bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit amongst yourselves from the day you have heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. And he has made known to us your love and spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Scripture from inspired by the Spirit and for us today. And we will look a little closer at this a little bit later in our service. At this time, we will have the opportunity to have the ushers come forward and collect the offering for this morning. If you are a guest today, please feel under no compulsion or obligation to contribute. Uh, this is an opportunity for those of us who are uh, joined with this church to, to answer God's call to contribute to the work here with our gifts and tithes and offerings. And our musical offering for this morning is a song called Come As You Are. Here we pray. 
praise you. We thank you that you have gathered us here. You have provided for our needs. You have provided yourself for us, most of all. And we've, you've provided the things that we've needed this week. And you provided for this church. I thank you for using us, your people, to provide for the needs here. And I pray, Lord, that you bless each gift and bless each giver. That the work of your kingdom would come more and more here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated. Yes. Hey kids, please come on up. All right, I've got something here that... Well, you know what this is, but maybe other people don't know what this is. What is what's in here, Gideon? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. How many tomatoes are in there? Eight. There's eight tomatoes. And where did we get these tomatoes, Ella? My garden. Your garden. Thank you for letting me bring your tomatoes in. And there's something on the side there. Do you see what that is? Can you tell? Right there. What is that? A seed. A seed. Well, so we've got these these wonderfully, what are these, golden, golden tomatoes? Um, that Sela is growing in the garden at the corner of the house. And if you are listening to the, the, the Bible passage that was read today, uh, that Lisa read for us, God talked, uh, the scriptures talked, and God through the scriptures talked to us about fruit. Now you know the whole thing. Is, is, a is a tomato a vegetable or a fruit? Do you know? What do you think, Gideon? A fruit. A fruit, yeah, you know. You're, you know about these things. Tomato, I always thought was a vegetable, but apparently it's a fruit. And so it reminded me of what was read this morning. God wants to grow fruit in and through us. And it starts like this. This is really, really small. Can you see? What's, what, what size is that? What, what would you say? How big is that? Um, as big as a what? Spider egg. As big as a spider egg. I like that. So it's really, really, really small. A little teeny tiny seed. And, and a, well, we didn't grow ours from seeds, but maybe next year we will. You put the seed in the ground, right? And it grows and grows and grows. And all of a sudden you get all oh, this fruit. Well, the seed for us is believing in Jesus and believing the gospel. Whoa, watch out. So the seed, the teeny tiny seed, believing the gospel, you might go, well, it's not. So you might think, well, it's not that big of a deal to believe in Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen. So you and me, we'll see. And so the seed is planted in our hearts and God waters it and there's rain. Sometimes there's storms and rain and sometimes there's sunshine and the waters and grows and the the truth and the wonderful grace of the gospel grows in our hearts and then we have fruit. And the fruit that God gives us is loving God and loving others in real ways. Because this is super real, right? This is not pretend. Can I, you want one? You don't want one, you want one, Katie? You're gonna make me eat alone? Can I eat this one? This, this belongs to you, so can I eat one? All right. Now the fruit, actually gives me nourishment and strength and according to some people inflammation in my joints but whatever um, we've been talking about nightshade plants anyways um, so the fruit uh, grows and gives does good in the world so when we start with the seed of the gospel of believing in our hearts in our lives it's watered by God himself, and he gives the growth, and he gives the fruit. We'll talk more about that later, but those verses about God growing in us is what inspire me to take in your bowl of tomatoes today. So thank you. Do you want me to take it back home, or do you want to share it in Sunday school? All right, I'll take it back home. All right, well, let me pray for us, and then you can go to Sunday school. Father in heaven, thank you for the seed of the gospel. Help us to believe it and trust in you, and would you please grow in our hearts, uh, your, your life and your love by your Spirit. And would the fruit of the gospel be grown in us and through us 
so we might love each other and with love and joy and peace and patience and all the good things that you give us. So we pray. I pray this for, for these kids here and the other kids in our church who, uh, who weren't able to join us today. Would you bless and keep them? Would you bless and keep all the families here, Lord? We need you so much. And everyone in this church, we need uh, your gospel. We need your fruit in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids. See you later. If anybody praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let us open our scriptures again. We have uh, provided an insert. Uh, it's got a kind of a map thing on the front. And this is uh, the first in a series. There we go. This uh, message here is the first in a series on the book, the biblical book of Colossians. It's a really small book. It's, you can, it's only like, I print, I print it out on like normal paper, and it's only like four pages. It's a, it's a relatively short book. It's a, it's a book of the Bible from, written by the Apostle Paul, and uh, it is to a, a church, which I've sort of entitled it, it's at the bottom here, a little letter to a struggling church about our awesome Christ. Now, the, the church in Coloss, it's in a town of Colossae, I, called Colossae, and uh, I don't know if you can decipher that map, it's kind of a weird map, but that is, uh, you can see Italy there on the left. And then uh, in the middle there is Greece, and then on the right is what now is modern day Turkey. They call that Asia Minor. And, um, and then there's a little blow up there, as you can see the towns of Colossae. And the town of Colossae is, was a real town, but it, uh, there was an earthquake that happened not too many years after they received this letter. So now it's actually just buried, it's underground. They didn't bother to excavate it because it's not a very significant town. So this, uh, scholars have told us that Colossae was the least significant town of any that received any of the uh, New Testament letters. So why would we, here 2,000 years later, uh, take a look at this four-page letter to a town that doesn't even exist anymore, that had a, you know, they had some problems, but that's not too super bad compared to some of the other situations we find in the New Testament. Why would we examine this letter in a decent amount of detail together for the next few months. Well, because this is God's word to us. It was originally to these people, these Christians in Colossae, but because it is the Holy Scripture, because it is the it breathed in by the Spirit, it is for the church then and forever. It is for all who would believe. So we trust that the Spirit has inspired this word not only for those who originally received it, but for us as well. So, one of the first lines in, this, in the verses, uh, let's see, in the verse 2, it says, To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. Well, so I've entitled this message, To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Bennington. This message is for us. Now, in the limited amount of time that we have this morning, uh, I can't go through all the details, and nor would you probably wouldn't really want me to. So, I just put picked out a few points that I think and I trust, as the Spirit has guided us together, what is being said in these first few verses that have direct relevance to your journey of faith and to our journey of faith together as God's people. So, so my first question, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've titled this to the saints in Bennington. What does the word saint conjure up in your mind? Yeah, we got these phrases, right? Well, I'm no saint, which basically means I'm just as messed up as anybody else, right? Or, oh, so-and-so has a patience of a saint. Or, or uh, any songs come to mind? You know, when the saints go marching in, right? So we have all these associations of this word saint. Uh, saint Nick, right? And so all these... Well, the... There's a branch of the Christian church, which you're probably aware of, they, they talk about saints a lot. And they have this thing where if a, a, a 
Christian person has, has achieved these things in their lives and they, they, they achieve two miracles, then they're an official saint. So they've got, I, don't, I honestly don't know where they got that. It's, you can't find it in the scriptures. They, they found it somewhere else. Um, so that's what maybe a lot of people think, well, those are the, the real saints, right? St. Francis and St. whatever, St. Benedict, Saint, all these real saints. Well, the scriptures tell us if you are a Christian, if you are in Christ, you are a saint. You've earned a title. Well, you haven't earned it, actually. You've received a title of saint. Because, well, they, others might say that you have to do two miracles. But actually, one miracle has to occur to you where you were once dead spiritually. And now you are alive. That's the only miracle that's required for you to be a saint. So this letter is for you. To the saints in Bennington what do you truly need today? What do you need today? You can find it only in Christ. According to the scriptures we have before us this morning, whatever you need today, the things you really need today, you can only find in Christ. So this letter is for a Christian church. If you find yourself this morning, I, I don't believe in, in Jesus, I'm not a follower of Jesus, I'm not in Christ, um, then these words aren't for you yet. But maybe you could get a, a glimpse into what it means to be in Christ. Are you being called to believe today? Maybe hearing the truth and love of Christ would call you to be a saint. So I, I've divided this into three points. Um, Paul is famous for his run-on sentences. Uh, I guess uh, he never took English from my English teacher. Oh, well, Greek, really. But uh, he, Paul, this... From verse like 3 all the way down to verse 8 is one giant sentence. And sometimes it's broken up in English for us. But So I've tried to try to just separate some ideas to help us think of through what Paul and what the Spirit is trying to say to us today. And uh, first of all, well, what do you truly need today? You can only find it in Christ and the grace and peace through Jesus. We all need peace in our hearts. And we all need God's Grace. So, Paul very commonly starts his letters like this. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. You see that at the end of verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. Grace is the, the Greek word which this was originally written in. Charis. And peace is based on the old Hebrew word which most of us know. Shalom. Do you want shalom in your life? I certainly do. When, when things go wrong... I get anxious and literally my hair falls out and, and other weird stuff happens. I need shalom in my life. Whatever you may have been, be experiencing now or maybe soon, you need shalom in your life. You need God's peace that can only come from God. That can, the, the other scriptures say peace beyond human understanding. How do you get that? Well, you need grace first. It's in, the, it's in the proper order. Grace to you and peace. You need God's grace, which is His, His love, His care, His forgiveness. Because if you don't have God's grace, you're not going to be able to have peace. We need to make peace with God. And the only way we can make peace with God and with each other and with even ourselves is through the gospel of grace. So it's only in Christ. And Paul likes to use this phrase, in Christ. It's two little words. In Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ? Well, have you ever been in two places at once? You know, somebody asks you, well, can you please, can you please go get the groceries and mow the lawn and do, and, and, all the, and you say, I can't be in two places at once. Well, Paul is saying to the Colossians and to you and me, you are in two places at once. Because look in verse 2, it says, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ, in Colossae. Okay, where am I? Am I in Christ or am I in Colossae? Well, one is the physical location. To the saints in Bennington. You are physically here in Bennington. You are in two places at once. So you are, as you believe in Christ, you are also in Christ. On the spiritual plane, which is, supersedes it all. In your spiritual, actual, eternal state, you are in Christ as you believe in Him. So yes, you can be in two places at once. And so Paul, when Paul says grace to you, he's saying the grace of Jesus Christ through the gospel is to you. 
Now it's interesting, this is a very, this is a standard letter template of, of the ancient New World, or the ancient uh, Near East. And, um, you know, we have, if, if you do a resume, or if you do a, a business letter, you have a certain format. He, Paul always uses the, just the normal format of the day. First he puts his name, then he, then he says greetings. But he puts the spin on it, because a normal letter would say greetings, and he doesn't say greetings, he says grace. He's taking the normal things of this world and turning it into something much higher plane. So, grace to you and peace to you. And if you, if you have the scriptures with you, if you turn just one page probably, maybe two, and look at the very end, the very last words of this book, it says, grace be with you. Grace to you, grace be with you. So what do you truly need today? I, I think the scriptures are showing us we need grace and peace. We need that today. Do you have that grace? Do you want that peace? You know, I was thinking of, uh, uh, who's, who sang the song, uh, Raindrops and Roses and Whiskers on Kittens? Was that, that, that Julie Andrews? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice little ditty. Sorry, I just stuck it in your head. Um, and so my favorite thing, she, when something bad happens, basically when the dog bites, when the beast stings, when they're feeling sad. Sorry, I, don't have, I didn't prepare the chords for this one. Um, I could sing that one. But when the singer is feeling sad, she thinks about these, these wonderful things. Well, those things are nice, but they're not going to last. If you want lasting peace and lasting grace, we can only find it in Christ. So grace and peace through Jesus. Uh, secondly, faith and love from the hope of heaven. Let's go down a few more verses here. And you can see in verse, starting in verse 4, we, have, we heard of your faith and of the love that you have for the saints because of the hope that you have in heaven. Faith, love, and hope. Now, there's a, uh, a scripture that is often read at weddings. By the way, I'm uh, just random note. I'm doing two weddings uh, starting on next Saturday and then the Saturday after that. So one of the readings for at least one of those weddings is 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind. Da, 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 da. And at the end it says, now the now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So that's one of Paul's favorite themes, faith, hope, and love. Now I found it very interesting that Paul is basing, if you look closely at this, Paul is basing faith and love in hope. Does that make sense? Where do you get, how do we have love? How do we have faith? Well, it comes, at least in this instance, it comes from hope. The hope that we have, and not just wishful thinking hope. When you think of hope, maybe you're thinking wishful thinking. I hope I can get an in-ground pool for my birthday. I've heard that in my house, right? That ain't going to happen. Sorry. I hope, yeah, that's, that's wishful thinking, right? I hope I get a pony. Nope. So, well, Rhonda maybe can hope. <laughs> go to her house and ride the pony. Uh, so, it's not the hope that we have, that we have been given in Christ, is not wishful thinking, it is confidence. The hope that we see in the scripture, that we have in ourselves, it's the confidence, it's something that can never be shaken. Do you want that, that hope, that, that hope that can be the foundation of the love for each other? Because since we have that confidence that the foundation of our faith is with Christ, then we can build, uh, God builds that through us of the faith and the, and the love based on that confidence that we have only in Jesus. Now, so some of the summer was great. Some of the summer was not so great for me. But uh, whenever there was a tough day, I, I, uh, I, could, I didn't really do this too much. But every now and then I'd be like, well, I do have you two tickets at the end of the summer. So no matter what, how bad today is, I can still, I'm still going to that concert and that's going to be awesome. Now, I don't know if you guys know, most of you probably know the famous Irish rock band, U2. It's my favorite rock, I'm not so much into rock, but it's my favorite rock band because, uh, there's a, actually there's a ton of gospel saturated in his lyrics because Spawn's Christian. But anyways, um, so, Whenever there was a bad day, I'd be like, well, I'm still going with my son to the best concert I could ever imagine. So I, I had that kind of that found, 
you know, and this is an analogy and obviously breaks down pretty fast, but I, I had that foundation of hope. Like, I still, there's still good things going to happen. There's still something, I know there's good things coming. And nothing is going to get in the way of that. Well, that's the type, a little bit of the type of hope that we have in Jesus. Jesus said, I am with, like we said last week, I am with you. I have got this and I have got you. Those promises will never fade away. We have hope so that our faith can grow and our love can grow. So do you want abundant faith? I do. Base it on the true hope of Jesus. The word of truth, the gospel, as Paul says here in verse 5. Do you want abundant love even beyond your normal strength? Based it on the true hope of Jesus. You know, when I'm living my life and I'm just doing stuff in my own strength, you know, I've got strengths, I've got weaknesses, and most of us, including myself, try to try to stay in the stream of your strengths, right? And then something comes up that requires a strength that I don't have, and either I ignore it or I screw it up altogether. And but how am I gonna overcome that? It's it's the supernatural love, the supernatural faith, the supernatural hope that can only show up because my weaknesses are there. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. So what do you need today? Find it only in Christ. Grace and peace, faith and love from the hope in heaven. And finally, fruit and growth in the gospel. I brought in my little tomatoes today about fruit and uh, i those tomatoes. And um, so let's look thirdly and finally at the fruit and growth from the gospel. We see this in verse 6, where, which Paul, Paul says, uh, the word of, leading up to verse 6, the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you and is indeed in the whole world bearing fruit and increasing. The good news will bear fruit. You know, a lot of these songs that we've been, I've, we've been singing and playing today, we've been singing together, talk about changing lives, changing hearts. You know, I don't know if any of you saw um, downtown yesterday, there was a bunch of orange shirts going up and down. That was a, that was a recovery walk for uh, awareness and, and, and I guess the bottom line is awareness of the recovery community, that recovery from addictions is possible. Now, hearts being changed, the lives being changed by various support networks here in town for those with the disease of addiction. And we, I personally and, my, and some of my family and lots of my friends, we are banding together to, to offer what we can to offer hope for those who feel hopeless. And to me, that's a small taste of what the hope of the gospel is because as I've, as I've told people, every problem, every concern, even every joy, every good thing is at the bottom of spiritual. Every problem is a spiritual problem. Because if we lack health in our spirits, that shows up in so many different ways. So the good news will bear fruit and hearts change and lives transform. Uh, as the scriptures say, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Those things together are the fruit of the gospel. It's not just something that we put on the shelf. It's something that affects our daily lives. And did you notice too that it says... It will grow in the whole world. Verse 6, it says, Indeed in the whole world. Now a cynic who was reading this in AD 62, when it was approximately when it was written, would just laugh. You're saying, wait, wait a second, Paul. Uh, you, you're saying that the gospel is growing in the whole world? Are you joking? The Christian church was so minuscule at that point. And he's saying the gospel is growing in the whole world. Well, yeah, it's okay. There's one in, in Philippi, and a little a little band in, in Rome, and yeah, it's the Jerusalem church. And, but the whole world? I mean, come on, Paul. This doesn't make any sense. He saw with spiritual eyes what they couldn't see with their physical eyes. That the seeds of the gospel, namely the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, was growing and growing and growing, and it was starting in these towns. And here we are, 
2,000 years later, and it is in the whole world. I had a chance to, to I was invited to a local American Baptist Church uh, down North Adams, and uh, they, they've invited a missionary from, uh, from Lebanon. His name is Daniel. Lebanon is in the Middle East, and they have a, like 1.5 million Syrian refugees that have crossed the border into their country. And it's a, it's, it's a country of only 4.5 million people, or no, three. Anyways, roughly one in four people within their borders right now are a refugee. And he is a missionary to, he's actually of, of, uh, of Indian descent, India as in India. He's of, of Indian descent, and uh, he is a missionary to folks in Lebanon. And it's fascinating because Lebanon is the only country, only uh, country in that part of the world that allows Muslims to convert to Christianity without any danger. So they're in an amazingly strategic place where, you know, we could, I honestly don't read a lot of, or watch a lot of news um, for my own reasons, but I pick up stuff here and there. But I don't know what necessarily the perception of the Middle East right now is. It's probably not super good, right? You think the whole world is falling apart and it's starting right there. Well, you can't always believe everything you read in the, in the media, um, whoever is, whatever voice, because you have to know what's on the ground level. And spiritually speaking, there is a massive revival happening in the Middle East. Not to, not to a Christian revival happening in the Middle East, not to dim, diminish the human suffering of, of the refugees, but they are, their eyes are opening to the spiritual realities of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that the darkness that they've been living in. So when, when Paul says, bearing fruit and increasing in the whole world, it's still true. It is still true. The faith that we hold on to is changing lives and hearts not only here, but throughout the whole world, all the more. The, the researchers will tell you that our, in our particular part of the world, our faith is often not doing great, collectively. But you don't always have to believe that either. We, we were the hot spot. We, I was just talking in the hallway about the, great, the, the, the revivals a couple hundred years ago, the Great Awakenings. We were the hot spot here in New England. And the hot spots tend to move around. That's the gospel of the whole world. So whenever you might feel discouraged, and I know I often am tempted to feel discouraged about how things are going with our faith and with our church and all that good stuff, remember that the gospel is going forward throughout the whole world, even places you would never expect. And it will happen again. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up because um, it was given to me secondhand and I didn't get the first source, but it really caught my imagination. Um, Somebody told me, somebody, a Christian here in Bennington, friend of a friend, I heard this story, been praying for Bennington for a long, long, long time. And God gave her a, a vision or a dream or something, you know, something like that, where it was in her, apparently in her mind's eye, and I, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of details wrong, but what really caught my imagination is in her dream, uh, what I, I guess is kind of like the roaring branch, you know, it's coming down from the mountain, but it was really Main Street. Like, Main Street was a river. Can you imagine? Of course, we have all these images of flooding, so try to put that aside. But in an imaginary world, like, can you imagine Main Street being a river, a crystal clear, beautiful river, and that river being the Spirit of God? Where God in the scriptures talks about living water flowing. Living water of, of the gospel flowing. Can you imagine the living water of the gospel flowing down Main Street and changing men and women and children in this town? That is what we are here for. To share the love of Christ with whoever is on Main Street and beyond. I like the, the idea that it was in Main Street because that's where everything can radiate out from. We've got the gospel going forward at Green Mountain Church. We've got the gospel going forward at the Summit Church. We've got a new Methodist pastor in town, and he wants the gospel to go forward. We've got the gospel going forward at Harvest Church. We've got the gospel going forward here. God is doing a new thing here that is wonderful and amazing. And lives are being changed. It happens slowly, sometimes. 
But lives are being, just like they're being changed in the Middle East, just like they're being changed throughout the whole world, lives are being changed here. So take courage, take faith, that we can take a bold step of faith because this is the kind of God that we serve together. So think about with me about your journey of faith this, this past year, or maybe this past month, or maybe this past week. What, what has your journey of faith looked like? Have you seen these things that, that the scriptures have brought to mind today? Peace and grace, faith, hope, and love, fruit from the gospel. Have you seen those things? I hope and pray, and I have seen it in you from my perspective, and I thank God for that. Or maybe you say, I'm not sure, or no, not really. Well, ask God to show you. Ask God to grow you. Maybe you're stuck in something that's holding you back, some unbelief or some sin. That's, that's the good news of the gospel, where you can be released from that and go forward. Yeah, the Colossian church had some problems, which we'll get to later as we kind of continue to examine this. But Paul recognized their faith and their love and their hope. Paul recognized the fruit that was going on. And so as you are in Christ, as we are in Christ together, as you have faith, as we have faith together, you have love, you have peace, you have the growth. I see it in and through. I see it in individuals. I see it collectively. And I want to see it all the more. That's what we're here for. To grow in Christ so that our lives will be changed. And so that the lives of those around us would be changed as the gospel goes forward. So, my friends, my brothers and sisters, what do you need today? You can find it only in Christ. Let us pray. Father, thank you for sending Jesus so we can have faith and hope and love. Thank you for sending Jesus so we can have grace and peace. Thank you for sending Jesus so we might have fruit in our lives. Lord, help us to turn from those things that may be holding us back. And help us to receive your forgiveness. And help us, Lord, give us courage to take a bold step of faith as we see you doing good things in this town, in this area, in our lives, in this church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's conclude our service by singing Blessed Assurance, hymn number 314. Please stand with me and let's sing Blessed Assurance, hymn number 314.
God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen.